Hello, and welcome to Ivoclar Vividence Clinical Learning Series. Today we're going to discuss how confusing cementation can really be. Is there truly one cement you can use for every clinical case? No, there's not. So today we're going to give you the tools to help you identify when to use what type of cement. So let's start with discussing what type of cement categories there are to choose from. In dentistry, cements are categorized in three main categories, adhesive, self-adhesive, and conventional. Now conventional cements are at the bottom of the pyramid and have been available since the 18th century with the introduction of zinc oxide eugenol. And from there, they've evolved into other cements such as zinc phosphate, carboxylate, glass ionomers, and resin modified glass ionomers. Conventional cements are like your traditional bricks and mortar example. The cement itself is not sticky, but instead it's used more as a filler between the tooth and the restoration. You are relying on the retentive features of the tooth preparation to loot your restoration in your patient's mouth. Now adhesive cements are at the top of the pyramid and were created to provide higher mechanical and physical properties while maintaining excellent aesthetics. Also, you must always use an adhesive cement when you don't have a retentive preparation. Now, adhesive cements rely on chemically bonding the restoration to the tooth. Therefore, a retentive preparation is not critical. Approximately 15 years ago, the self-adhesive cement category was created. It combines the ease of use of conventional cements with some of the great product attributes of adhesive cements. Now, what are the main differences between these three categories? Number of steps. You'll have less steps with a conventional cement and more steps with an adhesive resin cement. Retentive prep. It is absolutely critical to always have a retentive prep when using a conventional cement or a self-adhesive cement. Bond strength. You will achieve the best bond strength when you use an adhesive resin cement and minimal to no bond strength when you're using a conventional cement. Overall strength. When adhesively bonding, the overall strength of the restoration increases versus when the restoration is cemented with a conventional cement. Now, how do you know when to use what if there isn't one syringe that can work in every clinical situation? You need to ask yourself these three questions. Number one, what type of restoration will you be placing? Are you placing a crown, an inlay, onlay, bridge, or veneer? Now this is important because you wouldn't use the same cement syringe for a veneer that you would for a crown. Number two, what is that restoration made out of? And this really does make a difference. It's a high strength ceramic material like IPS Emax or Zirconia, then you can use any of these categories. If it's a lower strength restoration, like Lucite reinforced or Feldspathic porcelain, then you have to bond it in at all times since the restorative material is not strong. Now the final question, number three, the tooth. We can't forget about the tooth. Do you have a retentive prep? What is a retentive prep? Remember, you need to have a minimum of four millimeters in height and a four to eight degree taper to qualify as retentive. If you have retention and proper reduction, you can use any of the cement categories. If you don't have retention, which means you don't have any of those previous requirements, then you must adhesively bond in that restoration. So as you can see, there are so many factors that go into what type of cement you should use for each clinical case. Now that you know the difference between the categories, don't forget your next step is to ask yourself those three questions so you can narrow down the cement category that will work best for you. Once you know what categories you can choose from, it's all up to you. What's important to you and what type of cementation do you want to offer to your patients?